Good morning and welcome to my thought for the day. Today I am questioning why God seems to save some people miraculously and not others. I am reading from the Message Translation of Acts 12, beginning at the first verse. Peter under heavy guard. That's when King Herod got it into his head to go after some of the church members. He murdered James, John's brother. When he saw how much it raised his popularity ratings with the Jews, he arrested Peter, all this during Passover week, mind you, and had him thrown into jail, putting four squads or four soldiers each to guard him. He was planning a public lynching after Passover. All the time that Peter was under heavy guard in the jailhouse, the church prayed for him most strenuously. Then the time came for Herod to bring him out for the kill. That night, even though shackled to two soldiers, one on either side, Peter slept like a baby, and there were guards at the door keeping their eyes on the place. Herod was taking no chances. Suddenly, there was an angel at his side and light flooding the room. The angel shook Peter and got him up. Hurry! The handcuffs fell off his wrists. The angel said, Get dressed. Put on your shoes. Peter did. Then, Grab your coat. Let's get out of here. Peter followed him, but didn't believe it was really an angel. He thought he was dreaming. Past the first guard, then the second, they came to the iron gate that led into the city. It swung open before them on its own, and they were out on the street, free as the breeze. At the first intersection, the angel left him, going his own way. That's when Peter realised it was no dream. I can't believe it. It's really happened. The master sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's vicious little production and the spectacle the Jewish mob was looking forward to. Still shaking his head, amazed, he went to Mary's house, the Mary who was John Mark's mother. The house was packed with praying friends. What an amazing story, quite as extraordinary as in Acts 16, when Paul and Silas are released from prison by an earthquake. It is easy to focus on the release from prison by the angels and skip past the first four verses. In these, James has been put to death by Herod as an act of popularity seeking, and Peter is next in line. After the death of the first martyr Stephen, and now James's death, Peter should have been fearful. However, we read that he slept comfortably between his guards that night. Amazing, but maybe Peter was reflecting on what Jesus had said to him after forgiving him three times in John 21, that he would die when he is old. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. Someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. We know that James, as indicated in Mark 10, was given no such hope. Jesus said to James and John, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. So, why was Peter spared? Why was James not? Why are some spared, some not? Why do some suffer so much? Why is life so unfair? These questions are so often asked. Last month, a good friend of ours, aged 32, a strong Christian, recently married, died in a car crash. Why? Tomorrow we go to the funeral of the son of a good friends who committed suicide at the age of 32. Why? Of course we do not see what God sees, but we can imagine why God intervened to save Peter and Paul, whose ministry is so foundational. We read of Paul's dilemma in Philippians 1, where he says, To me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am going to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me yet. So here we are at this transient life of joy, pain, suffering and death. Let us look forward to what it says in Revelation 21 verse 3. 
They will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. We can look forward to that day, and meanwhile, let's be thankful and full of hope. Amen.